Greetings in the awesome and wonderful name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus the Christ. Welcome into the Tuesday night edition of MTV's uh, Facebook Live Bible study uh, on behalf of the Mount Vernon Missionary Baptist Church, Auburn, Alabama, where I have been privileged and honored to serve as pastor and CEO for the past 33 years. I trust that God is moving miraculously and powerfully in your life. Ms. Jacqueline Adams, good evening to you tonight. And I trust that you're walking in the favor of God, Mary Thomas, and to your family and to the entire Hutchison family. Um, may God be with you in your hour, in your moment of bereavement and chaos and frustration. Uh, we are praying much for you. Um, Miss Marnetta Wilson, good evening to you. Miss Gracie Talbert, uh, Miss Bernice Adair, Miss Deacon Wallace, and Miss Deacon Wallace, Lord have mercy. Miss Bernice Adair Wallace and Deacon Leon Wallace, good evening to you. Miss Yvonne H. Whitfield, Dr. Gina Jenny Boykins, Chris and the Boykins family, my younger brother, my baby brother, Reverend Marvin Brown, good evening to you. Miss Annie Reese, Trust that all is well with you. Evangelist Teresa Thomas, good evening to you also. What a mighty, mighty, mighty God we serve. And I am honored for this privilege to come to you by way of Facebook Live. Um, Evangelist Margaret Bozeman, good evening to you. Reverend Snoop Stinson, all these evangelists and preachers and Reverend God bless you, Miss Enette Reese, and uh, all of our friends down 29. I know Renee ain't at Bible study, so tell her I say, hey, uh, God bless you all also. Um, Reginald, good evening to you. Uh, Miss Alfreda Murdoch and our friends in Monkey Town, Montgomery, Alabama. Good evening to you, Robert Smith. Uh, good evening to you, and bless you in your moment and, and your moments of sorrow. Um, we serve a mighty God, my nutter. And um, that's my story and I'm gonna stick with it. Well, tonight we are continuing our study, Miss Mary Edwards in the general epistle of James. Remember we started there on last week. And last week we introduced you to the author, which is James, the half brother of Jesus the Christ. We introduce you to some of his accolades. He calls himself, and all this is in verse one, a bond slave or the way the King James writes it, a servant of God and of Jesus Christ. And then we, Deacon Marcus Jackson, not only did we look at the author and some of his attributes or accolades, uh, we looked at the audience and we determined that James was writing to a group of Messianic Jews who were scattered Abroad, Messianic Jews are strictly Jews who believe, as we believe, that Jesus is the Messiah, uh, that Yeshua HaMashiach, that Jesus is the Son of God, and that Jesus is God in the flesh. Miss Thomas, good evening to you. We also introduce you to the two different ways, Miss uh, Welch, that uh, the Bible uses the word temptation. Um, it's the same root word, but it takes on a different meaning in verse two, where James says, my brother encountered all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. That word means trials, tribulations, heartache, pain, problem, burdens, vicissitudes. But then in, uh, he switches the uh, meaning in verse 12 when he says, blessed is the man that endureth temptation. There he's talking, Coach Witt, about an enticement to sin. So in verse two, we see the word temptation, meaning trials, tribulation, heartache, and pain. In verse number 12, the word temptation means an enticement to sin. That's why uh, verse 13 says, let no man say when he is tempted, when he is enticed to sin, I am enticed to sin of God, for God can not be tempted with evil, neither tempt God with any man. So God cannot entice you to sin, but God does indeed test us. And the purpose of the test 
is not for God to see where we are, but the purpose of the test is for us to see where we are. And I heard somebody say many, many years ago, uh, that when, the, when the teacher is silent, they usually mean they're giving a test. <laughs> okay, so if God is being silent, maybe God in your life is giving you a test. So we made it all the way to uh, verse number 19. So 19 is where we will pick up tonight, and I know I will finish James chapter 1. Miss Kimberly Pointer, uh, good evening to you. I know I will finish James chapter number 1 uh, tonight, and hopefully we'll see how time goes. We may go into chapter 2. Two main things that I want to draw your attention to that I think James draws our attention to in verses 19 through 27. And Miss uh, Millie Wright, good evening to you. Um, the first thing James talks to us about is self-control, is the ability to influence you. He talks to us about discipline, and he tells us four areas that we need, that I need to challenge you as as James challenges all of us to work on self-control in these four areas. I told you last week, Dr. Tina Holloway, Colonel Dr. Tina Holloway, that uh, James is real proverbial. It is almost like the Proverbs. He, he gives us words of wisdom, words we can live by, because the truth of the matter is Christianity is about a lifestyle. Christianity is about how you live, and we'll deal with that in a moment. So verses 19 through 21, Snoop, uh, James challenges us to have self-control. In verses 22 through 27, James challenges us to have uh, self, uh, uh, not to have self-deception. Okay, self, self-control and self-deception. Those two, as we complete and conclude James chapter number one. Look at, he challenges us to have self-control, verse 19 through 21, in four areas. The first area that James challenges us to have self-control. Remember, self-control is nothing more than discipline. Because, see, we like to brag about uh, Manetta and Dr. Holloway, how much influence we have over others. But discipline has to do with how much influence you have over you. Because if you got all that information, yeah, I mean, if you have all that influence, seem like you ought to be able to influence you. But I start by to tell somebody tonight that you can't even influence you. You tried, you said you were going to lose weight and you didn't. You said you were going to stop cursing and you didn't. You said you were going to stop uh, gossiping and you didn't. You don't even have control over you. So James is challenging us to have self-control. The Bible calls it temperance. Um, um, look at Proverbs chapter 25, and we'll deal with a lot of, in Proverbs tonight, um, because I told you James is, uh, um, um, uh, pro, uh, I forgot the word I'm trying to use, uh, kind of proverbial. That's the word I, I want to use. I said Proverbs chapter number 25, verse number 28. The Bible calls it temperance. It calls it when you have you under control, when you have your attitude, your mind, your behavior, your action under control. Bible, you see, because one of the things that we've got to understand is, Ms. Wilson, is that the Holy Ghost is not going to do for us. Oh, my God. Preach, Betty Brown. Oh, this boy. What the Holy Ghost has assigned for us to do for ourselves. There are certain things that you that you must have the responsibility to do. He says, okay, and, and one of those things you got to do is to be disciplined. Yes, the Holy Ghost will teach you. Yes, the Holy Ghost will guide you. But the Holy Ghost is not going to be disciplined for you. You must be disciplined yourself. No more than the Holy Ghost is going to just let you um, uh, lose weight. If you want to lose weight, you got to cut your calories and go to the gym or walk or do some exercise. Glory to God. Self-discipline. Self, you have a responsibility in this. You have to bring your um, um, behavior, your actions under control by the power of the Holy Spirit. Check this out. The Holy Spirit is not going to do any more than you allow him to do. Let me back up and say that again. The Holy Spirit is not going to do any more. Miss Sonia Wilson, good evening to you. Than you allow the Holy Spirit to do. 
Brother Jackson, good evening to you. So um, um, James uh, teaches us, he challenges us to be disciplined, to have temperance, to have self-control. Proverbs chapter 25 and verse number 28. Let's see what the writer has to say. Verse 28, he that has rule, control, power, authority over his own spirit, self-control, discipline, temperance, is like a city that is broken down. Let me read again. He that had no rule, he that has no discipline, no self-control, just all out of control. Notice what he said. He, you, he, he says, is like, similarly, a city that is broken down and without wall. And a city that's broken down and without wall is open for the enemy to attack it. So what the writer here is saying is when you have no discipline, no self-control, no temperance, the enemy can have his way. You want to know why the enemy can have his way in your life? You want to know why the enemy is wreaking havoc in your life? Perhaps, just maybe, just maybe, you have no self-control and you are just relying and, and you know, and you want these folks that think everything is supernatural and all you got to do is exist and the Holy Ghost is going to do everything for you. I start by to tell you the devil is a bold faced liar. You have to have discipline yourself. Galatians 5 and uh, 23. I, I'm not going to turn to it tonight. Talk to us about you, about you. And I tell you what, yeah, let's go to it. Galatians chapter 5. Verse number 23, James challenges us. He says, but the fruit of the spirit, I'm in 22. Here is what's produced, what the Holy Spirit produces. The fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long-serving gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, self-control. When you are controlled by the Holy Spirit, you learn to control you. Why? Because the Holy Spirit is controlling, is controlling you. Glory to God. But you must be disciplined enough to submit yourself to the moving and to the guidance of the Holy Spirit. James says, first of all, I want to challenge you to be under, to, to, to have self-control, what, what we call discipline, glory to God, what we call temperance. Now let's go back, back to James and see those areas that he challenges us. I won't exegete the text. I promise you I will exegete it. Verse 19. First of all, he says, wherefore my beloved brethren, the word brethren there is plural. You know that by now for brothers and sisters in Christ. He's talking to the family now. He's talking, he's teaching, he's preaching, he's writing to Messianic Jews and by extension he's writing unto us because we are brethren Anybody that believe in Jesus to Christ becomes brother and sisters in Christ Jesus. He said, wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man, that means man, woman, boy, or girl. Ronnie, good evening to you. He says, here is a universal principle as it relates to self-control. In these areas, everybody from the pulpit to the back door needs to, ch to be challenged to grow and yes, be convicted in these areas of discipline. He says, first of all, I want you to be disciplined in your ability to listen. Listen to what he says in verse number 19. Wherefore my, wherefore my beloved brethren, let every man a woman, the word man there is from the Greek word anthropos, is where we get our English word anthropology. It means male. It means human being. Let every human being, check this out, be swift to hear. Oh my God, he's preaching to me tonight because uh, one of the first things I learned when I was matriculating at Troy University, uh, uh, earning a master's degree in counseling, that the greatest gift that a counselor can have is the ability to listen. Is the ability to be quiet, shut up, and listen attentively. He's saying unto us, he's challenging us. He's saying, be swift, run quickly. Whatever you do, discipline yourself where you learn to listen. Now, he's not talking about listening to the voice of God. Obviously, it's important that we listen to the voice of God. But here he's talking about listening to your brothers and sisters, listening to your fellow man, listening attentively. Because one of the things that we do not do is we do not know how to listen. I'll never forget, uh, once again, when I was matriculating at Troy University, getting a master's degree in counseling, uh, this girl was giving her presentation 
And I shall never forget the question she asked. It's a pertinent question for us today, Mary and Sonia and Snoop and my netta. Notice what, here's the question she asked. And I want to ask this question of you, in particular in relationships. Covenant Grace, good to have you. Uh, Covenant Grace is still on vacation. She's been gone on vacation for a long time, but she deserves this long vacation. Here's the question that they asked that she asked of the other, of those of us who are in graduate school, getting a degree in counseling. She said, I want to know, check this out. Are you listening or are you just waiting to talk? Because most of us are not listening. We are just waiting to talk. And you know people who are just waiting to talk because before you can get your statement out, they are already talking over you. In relationships, are you listening Sometimes, uh, 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 because I try to practice what I preach, I, I, I try to practice what I teach, and sometimes covering the grace is just talking and talking and talking and talking, and she'll look and say, are you listening to me? I say, yeah. And then she'll say, what did I just say? And then I will go back and repeat what she said, because I'm working really trying, uh, 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 Miss, uh, Miss Patterson, trying to listen to what, the pe to what she's saying, but, uh, but it's so uncommon for me not to break in. She said, are you listening? Because I, I am a therapist, have a master's degree in therapy, I mean in counseling, but sometimes I don't listen because I think I have all the answers. And I'm not the only one. So I ask you, are you listening or are you just waiting to talk? James is saying, Dr. William May Stoke, he said, James is saying, you need to learn how to stop getting ready to talk. I know you're the bright above on the tree. I know you like me. We got all the answers. But James is saying that's not the Christian way. The Christian way is to be quick to listen and say, what do you have to say? What do you want to say? And then listen to what the other person has to say. The first challenge is to be quick to hear. Glory to God. And not, and, and I don't want you anymore to be just waiting to talk. <laughs> glory to God. Glory, glory to God. That's, that's number one. Number two, he challenges us to be disciplined in what we say. Look at the text, verse 19. Beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear. We're going to stop talking so much and learn to listen. And check this out. Be swift. I'm, I'm sorry. Let man be swift to hear and slow to speak. Miss Bernice Hutchinson, good evening to you in your moment and hour of bereavement. Praying for you, boo. We, we with you. We in this together. All right. He says, and I want you to be a run to listen. Walk to speak. Discipline. Discipline. He's saying run to listen, but we got that backward. We run to talk and we crawl to listen. That ain't the way James said, does it? If you're going to be a good Christian and you are going to at least make a conscious effort to obey the Bible, learn to listen to what other people have to say. You ain't the only one that got some sense. You ain't the only one that knows some scripture. You ain't the only one. I said the way I want to say it. You're not the only one that know the Lord. You're not the only one that has some good ideas. That's right. Run to listen. Walk to speak. Proverbs 29 and 11. Go there. Because see, some of y'all like to brag. Child, whatever. Uh, 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 if it come up, it's going to come out. You a fool. <laughs> Oh my God, I didn't call, yeah, I did call you a fool, but I'm just quoting the Bible. Some of y'all like to brag. Child, I speak my mind all the time. I don't care who it is. If it's a boss, is it my husband, is it my wife, is it my child? If it going, if, if, if I think it, it's going, that's a fool. And let me prove it to you. The Bible, Reverend Ralph Stokes, good evening to you, my brother. The Bible calls you a fool. If, if I can find the scripture, that is right there. Proverbs 29, 11. I told you, James is proverbial. Proverbs 29, 11. If it, if it come up, I'm sorry, that's just me. It ain't just you. It's just who you choose to be. Fool won't bridle his tongue. Okay. Uh, Proverbs 29 and 11. I'm teaching this bed y'all receiving. Miss Epps, good evening to you. 29 and 11. He says, a fool. And somebody ignorance. Well, I call it an idiot. You're dumb. Uttereth all his mind. 
So next time somebody brag to you, talking talk about if it come up, it come out, say the Bible call you a fool. But the wise man keepeth it till afterwards. One of the things I tell Emerald all, all the time is, Emerald, you don't have to respond to everything some somebody say, girlfriend, she got to get the last word and I have to stop. It. I said, no, you don't have to respond. Can I help somebody tonight? Come here. You don't have to respond to every tweet, to every Facebook page post, to everything somebody say. And I'm preaching to me. You don't have to respond to everything somebody says. Some of the stuff ought to roll off your back like water rolling off, rolling off a duck. But not you. You got to get the last word. I have some, I, uh, uh, because we're in a technological age, I have some rules and some regulations for me as it relates to Facebook. I never, ever, ever, unless I know you real well, I never, ever, ever comment on somebody's post. And the reason I don't is because I don't like to talk where I can't control the outcome. And as a matter of fact, I am so adamant about that. I've gotten in arguments with people on my post and, and, and they made their point late at night. And then I made mine late at night and I was ready to go to sleep. I blocked them for the night because nobody going to get the last word on my Facebook page. Nobody going to get the last word but me. I actually blocked them for the night so they wouldn't get the last word and then re and unblock them in the morning. <laughs> Glory to God. Why? Because I'm going to get the last word on my Facebook page. What they got to do with this? I don't know. But he says, be challenged. I challenge you to be quick to listen and slow to hear. Why? Because the fool uttereth all of his mind. The fool. Glory to God. Go to Proverbs 17, 28. Why are you over there? This good. Proverbs 17, 28. Oh, my God. God, what a mighty God we serve. Thank God for the word. Because the word, it, it's like a two-edged sword. It'll hit you and it, it'll, Lord Jesus, it will cut you, cut me, cut him, cut her, all at the same time. <laughs> My mother, I'm that idiot. I'm, I'm, I'm that stupid. I'll block them tonight and unblock them in the morning so we can continue our conversation. Well, I'll tell you our turn. Proverbs 17, 28. It says, there is again, even a fool when he holdeth his peace, is counted wise. You want to know how to be wise? Shut your mouth. Some of y'all talk too much. You just yap, 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 yap about any and everything, putting all your business on Facebook, putting all your business all over town, and then you get mad when somebody criticizes you. You get mad when somebody got something negative to say. If you don't want folk in your business, stop putting it all out all, all over Facebook. Marvin Humphrey, good evening to you, brother. Verse 28, even a fool, I ain't caught, well, I, am, I guess I am calling you a fool because Solomon does. Even a fool, when he holdeth his peace, is counted wise, and he that shutteth his lips is esteemed of a man of understanding. He said, if, when you learn how to shut your mouth and be disciplined enough to not let everything you want to say come out your mouth, even if you're a fool, you are counted as wise. Why? Because wise people know how to shut the mouth. Proverbs 18 and 21, that's the one y'all really like. It said the power of life and death is in your tongue. Now the charismatics got y'all all messed up with that scripture. That scripture does not mean that if, that if somebody dying, all you got to do is say live and they're going to live. All you got to do is make some positive confession. The devil is a lie. Life and death is in God's hand. Because... <laughs> Just common every day walking around chewing gum sense ought to tell you that if Solomon said life and death, the power is, is in the tongue, and that means you can stop there. Why Solomon did? I'll wait. Why all these great saints who taught the power of life, meaning that you can stop death by what you say, why they dead? I'll wait. I mean, y'all can just believe some of this silliest theology as it relates to the Bible. If, in fact, I could stop death, Mama sure wouldn't be dead. If, in fact, I could stop death, why your loved one dying? You can't stop death by what you say. 
Now, you can stop there by what you do by losing weight. <laughs> you can stop there by what you do by exercising, by eating right, by taking care of your body, by taking care of your health. But there will come and every day walking around since I'll tell you that if, in fact, we had the a power to stop death, who would die? Why would your cousin be dead? Why would your child be dead? Why would your mama be dead? Why would Solomon be dead? Why would David be dead? Why would, Absol Why would anybody ever die? Glory to God. The Bible said there'd been a point of the man to die once. The power. Now, we're going to deal with what the power of life and death mean because this going to be uh, because what you say. Glory to God is powerful, but uh, uh, because that's going to be one of the things of James. But I want you to understand that's not what that verse means. Because it's, it, the next verse said, I mean, the, the end of it said, you shall reap the fruit of what you say. If you yap all day, <laughs> you're going to a, a, a more accurate translation would that be would be good and evil come from what, what we say. Good and evil is produced. You remember Matthew 15? Jesus told the Pharisees and, 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 and Sadducee that which you come uh, that what goes in doesn't defile you. But that which comes out of your mouth emanates well from your heart it emanates from your heart that what that's what defiles a person so we'll deal uh with that scripture uh a little bit later on one more uh let's see uh proverbs 21 23 james challenges us first of all to run to hear listen stop being ready to talk just listen and now he's challenging us uh, to be disciplined in our speaking. Proverbs 21, 23. And, and then we're going to move on to the next one. Glory to God. Um, um, uh, uh, well, I, I, I don't think you can even delay death by what you say. <laughs> I mean, I, uh, I, I don't see that in the Bible. Uh, you, can, you can delay it. Uh, you, can, uh, uh, get, you can have better health by, uh, by what you do. But if if, if, if the charismatic is right and all I do and all I got to do, all you got to do is name it and claim it. Here's what I want you to do. Speak yourself rich and don't get a job. I'll wait. They got y'all messed up. <laughs> y'all, y'all believing in all this crazy theology and it ain't working because the theology is messed up. People that have jacked up lives often have jacked up theology because you speaking something when you ought to be getting your butt out getting a job. You speaking money into your bank account when you ought to be out getting an education. <laughs> Glory to God. If, in fact, all I have to do is, is name it and claim it, why am I going to school? <laughs> all I got to do is name it and claim a good job. Why am I, why am I paying my bills on time? Be uh, 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 trying to maintain good credit. All I got to do is name it and claim it. The devil is a lie. One of the things James is going to talk about here is, is uh, in this text, in, in, in this letter, is faith without work is dead. I'll tell you something else. Speaking it without work is dead. Speak it all you want. i tell you what. If all you got to do is name it and claim it, speak me skinny tonight. Come on. I'm skinny. I'm skinny. I'm skinny. I'm skinny. I'm skinny. I'm skinny. Yeah, right. If I don't get my behind in that gym, I'm going to stay fat as a little hog. Glory to an almighty God. I forgot what I told y'all to turn. Proverbs, uh, I think it's 21, 23. Glory to God. Your, Proverbs 21, 23. See, if you getting jacked up theology, then you're going to get, uh, uh, then you're going to have jacked up, uh, uh, you're going to have a, a jacked up. Tell me why you weigh in Jeremiah. You know, good well, David is before that. Proverbs chapter 21, verse 23. Proverbs 21, glory to God. I know I'm messing on some of y'all theology. But either it's right or it's wrong. And you all have been standing on, get, uh, uh, standing on uh, 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 um, my miracle coming. My, and, and you've been claiming that and confessing that for 20 years and you still broke. And they've been prophesying to y'all. I even heard a preacher prophesy to y'all. And he said, your bank account will never be below $10,000. And most of y'all wouldn't know $10,000 if it slapped you. And y'all still following that same prophet. Tomorrow about 12 o'clock, you will have overflow. No, you won't. <laughs> now, let, okay, let, let, let me go. I mean, I just, it disturbs me how people so, so gullible. 21, and, and scared to question. I mean, scared, and I challenge MTV. Y'all question me. Do research. 
go go do research on proverb 21 um um um, um, I'm sorry, Proverb 18, 21. Go, 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 go do your research and see if what I tell you is, is the truth. Or, or, or you can try it. Go to the hospital and just tell somebody that dying. Don't die. Don't die. Don't die. I, I claim the name of Jesus. You won't die. You won't die. You won't die. And watch sometime they die. Oh my God. Let me say this. Okay, Lord. Your personal testimony is not theological principle. Let me say that again. I, I know it worked, Carl. Your personal testimony is not theological, is not theological principle. Okay? Let me say it again. Your, let me give you some examples. If your child came home today and your child said, and, and, and your child drove from Atlanta. No, I ain't got to go to Atlanta. Let's say you live in Auburn and your child drive from Opelika. And they get to your house where it normally takes Jehiah 20 minutes to get. They get there in five minutes or, t or 10 minutes. And you say, how you get here so quickly? They say, well, I ran every stop sign. I ran every red light. Now, are you going to say, oh, my God, that's a pretty good principle. And you say, I ain't even get killed. You can't take that because that happened to you and make it a universal principle and say, look, nobody needs to stop red lights anymore. Nobody needs to stop stop signs anymore. No, that that worked for you that time. But it's not universal principle. I give you another example. I was in once again matriculating in. Graduate school at Troy University. And um, I, I, I took the, I'm not going to tell you what class it was, but I took the hardest class I ever had to take. I, I was maintaining about a 3.9, no, I maintained a 4.0 GPA. No, about a 3.9. It was the hardest class. Yeah, I'll I, I tell you what it was. It was a upper level statistics class. Hardest class I ever took. I'm 30 some years old, so you know the teacher. I'm uh, the teacher, and I are real, are real, real tight. I go to take the final, and I have about a 98 average in 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 there. I go take the final, and I don't know. Oh God, I probably shouldn't say that. I don't know half the test. So I go take the test, and I go and tell the teacher. I said, I don't know this. And he said to me, answer what you know. I said, cool. I answered the ones I knew. She graded it and gave me 100. I can't make that a principle. I was shouting, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. But the more I thought about it, that wasn't a blessing. It was dishonest. So the principle can't be, if you don't know a test, go to the teacher and she'll just count what you know. But I can start giving God praise and say hallelujah. And God said, I ain't have nothing to do with that foolishness. God will never bless you by dishonest means. Let me say that again. God will never bless you by that was not a blessing from God. Now, was it good for me? Yeah, because I was able to maintain my GPA. But I cannot make that a universal principle that that uh, that when you don't know a, uh, a, a test, you go to the teacher and the teacher going to just count what you know. <laughs> I know that's right. Cause that Woo! Sound like you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Statistic is something else. All right. Now, now. So because you pray for somebody and they live does not mean that. That is a universal principle that every time you pray for somebody, they're going to live. And so they tell you power, life, and death in tongue, and, and, your, and, and, and your loved one is, is in the hospital, and you pray and you fast, and you pray and you fast, and they die anyway, and now you're feeling guilty because you've been taught incorrectly. You pray, and you, and, 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 but then you let God have, have his way. Okay? All right. So he says... He, 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 he says, I want to challenge you first of all to have self-control. First thing I want to have you self -control, have, have, have self-control over is I want you to run to hear. I want you to walk to speak. 
Then he said this, I want you to walk to getting angry. And he preaching to me now because I told y'all last week, the older I get, the more honorary I get, the more angry I get, the more frustration I get, the more impatient I get. And depending on what medicine I'm on, God knows I, I fly off the handle. That ain't godly. So I try to stay away from people. I'm just, I, you know, I'm just telling you like it is. I try to stay away from people because I know I'm old and I'm cranky. <laughs> you know, so Robert, we need to just stay away from people. But he says, check, check out the text. Verse 19, I hadn't left it yet. Let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to get angry. Some of you all walk around with a mad on. You get up in the morning mad. You go to bed mad. I'm, I'm, I'm talking about mad, angry. Miss Cobb, good evening to you. I mean, you angry at everything. Who are, I mean, why are you so mad at, why, why are you so angry at life, but yet you say you born again, say you sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost? I ain't, see, I'm not angry at life. I'm just angry at people. And people just, you know, I'm, I, I'm allergic to idiots. I'm allergic to, to stupidity. Okay? God knows I ain't the bright above on the tree. I'm one of the best researchers, though. <laughs> oh, my God. Somebody told me, Miss Cobb, Snoop Smile told me, you think you know everything. I said, no, I don't. I'm just smart enough to only talk about that, which I know. Let, let me say that again. I'm bright enough, Sonia, to only discuss that which I know. If I don't know it, I ain't going to talk about it. Glory to God. He says, be slow to anger. He challenges you to be slow to get angry. Proverbs 15 and 1. Proverbial. Proverbs 15, 15 and 1. I, I need you to keep my finger on Proverbs. Proverbs 15 and 1. I hope I'm, I'm helping somebody. Because some of y'all are not listening. You just waiting to talk. Some of y'all talk too much. And some of you walking around with a just, just mad at the world. 15 and 1. Note, note, note what he says here. He says, he says, a soft answer turns away wrath, anger. A soft answer. But grievous words stir up anger. You want, to get, you, want to, you want somebody to have attitude with you? Talk to them with attitude. You want somebody to, 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 to cut a fool? Okay. You want somebody to cut a fool? Cut, cut a fool with them. He says a soft answer. You don't have to. Oh, my God. Uh, I, I heard the lady say the other day. She, she told me. She said, match my tone. Match my tone. What right this? You don't have to match everybody's tone. Because they talking like a fool. That doesn't mean you got to talk like a fool. And this is where we got to pray for us. We think we always got to match people's tone. You holler at me, I holler at you. You curse at me, I ain't forgot how to cuss, I curse at you. That ain't the Christian way. And we need to start, I'm talking about from the past on down, we need to start doing what, start at least making it, do what the Bible say do. You are not, we are not free to do what we want to do. Am I sound like I'm fussing? I don't mean to. Because I'm preaching to me as much as I'm preaching to you. You know, sometimes I just ignore the Bible. I mean, just ignore it. We can't do that. He says, be slow to hear. Listen. Quick to speak. I'm sorry, quick to hear. Slow to speak. Slow to get mad. Stirring up anger. Ecclesiastes 7 and 9. Oh my God, what a mighty God we serve. Ecclesiastes 7 and 9. Do, do, do I need to turn it down? Oh, my God. He says a fool. <laughs> oh, my, 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 my. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty, awesome, awesome God we serve. Ecclesi I'm, I'm almost, I'm still back in Proverbs. Okay, there it is. Ecclesiastes. Uh, da, 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 where do I want to go? Seven and nine. Lord, I thought I was going to get further than this tonight. Hopefully, I'm helping somebody. Because we got to challenge each other. You know, Christianity is not just going to church, hear the sermon, shouting and going home. It's about, Bible study is about learning information, challenging you to do better. Devil, I'm wasting my time. If all I'm doing is coming on here giving you uh, something to shout about. No, I got to tell you. And sermons on Sunday morning ought to challenge you to change. 
You ought to leave there saying, what did pastor do through the word of God to challenge me to get closer to God? I'll tell you what the Bible said that I do. He challenged you to have self-control, to stop living a life out of control. Let the Holy Spirit control you. He challenges you to be disciplined in how you hear. He challenges you to shut your mouth. Now he's challenging you not to get angry so quickly. He didn't tell you not to get angry. He say, but let anger come to you slowly. Ecclesiastes 9, uh, 7, 9. He says, be not hasty in your spirit to be angry. For anger resteth in the bosom of fools. Some A fool is just waiting on somebody to rub them the wrong way. Don't you know people who just always on the edge? Always. Always. And they ain't 62 like I am and on medicine. <laughs> Glory to God, it's not an excuse. But something else will make me itchy. It makes me, you know, it, you know, it, it makes me uh, act fool. You know, it makes me, sometimes it's the medicine. I, now, I, 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 I hear him to be all, oh, Pastor, yeah, you put on the medicine if you want to. He says, be slow to get angry. Ephesians 4.26 says, get angry, but sin not. He said, don't let the sun go down on your anger. And what that means, it doesn't mean the literal sun. He means deal with your anger or that which made you angry. Deal with it. Notice why. Verse number, uh, verse, verse, verse 21. He said, for the wrath of a man, I'm still talking about self-control, work is not the righteousness of God. You can't represent God angry all the time. You can't, you can't be, a, and, and our goal is to represent him. What makes him look good is not you walking around angry all the time. Now there's some things gonna make you angry. He's talking about ungodly anger. Okay, he's talking about ungodly. People just walk around just, okay. All right, he says, uh, verse 21, wherefore lay apart all filthiness and uh, superfluity of naughtiness, sin. He said, lay aside it. That's your responsibility. So you got to be disciplined enough to lay aside, to lay it aside. I think Paul said, let us lay aside every weight and these sins that so easily set us back and run with patience. You see, you have a responsibility in this. Yes, the Holy Spirit will guide you. Yes, the Holy Spirit will keep you, but you must be willing to lay it aside and the Holy Spirit will aid you in laying aside. The Holy Spirit not going to come and get it and take it from you. You got to be willing to lay aside. And the Holy Spirit said, I'm going to come along beside you and give you some help in laying aside. you. But you want the Holy Ghost to do it all because people taught you that everything is miraculous. Everything is not miraculous. He says, and receive with meekness the engrafted, the planted word which is able to save your soul. He says it's about doing the word of God. And this is going to be his theme for a while. Receive the word of God, but watch this. The engrafted word, which is able to save you. That's self-control. Verses 19 through 21. He teaches us, he challenges us to have self-control, which is discipline or temperance or the ability to influence you. Now he moves from talking about self-control to talking about self-deception. And I'll have somebody on Facebook that know that the worst deception you can have is to deceive yourself. But James, and James tell you when to know you are in, when you, when, when you are involved in self-deception. You know, everybody wrong but you. You in a band, 150 folk, uh, uh, Mr. Porter and 99 folk going this way, you going the other way and you say everybody else wrong. You're right. He says, don't deceive yourself. He said, first of all, get self-control. Now, don't get involved in self, in self deception. Check it out in verse number 22 as we exegete the text. But be ye doers, work, it's going to be a theme of the word and not hearers only because when you are hearing the word and not doing the word, 
He said, you deceiving yourself. Every Wednesday, I mean, Tuesday, you, you in Bible study, you hear the word, you heard me say tonight, practice discipline. Stop responding to every negative thing somebody got to say about you or to you. Bring your, uh, 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 con con control yourself. Lack of discipline. The Bible says is a fool. James says, control yourself and be quick to hear. Don't be waiting to listen. I mean, don't be waiting to talk. Listen, James said, be slow to speak and, and, and be slow uh, uh, to respond. And then he said, be slow to anger. I forgot to tell you, now in, in, in verse 21, he talked about uh, um, uh, be disciplined in your behavior. Because verse 21, he talks about um, being disciplined in your behavior. Okay. Psalm 119 and 11. Second Corinthians 5, 17 said, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Behold, behold, old things have passed away. Behold, all things are become anew. Discipline yourself in your behavior. Being a Christian is about your behavior. Galatians 5, 16, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Being a Christian is about living a different style of life. And all of us need to do better in the way we live. Glory to God. Romans 12, 1, 2. Hebrews 12. So, there, so they talk about these cloud of witnesses. And here in 21, he said, man, get rid of sin based on the word. The more you know, the more you'll grow. <laughs> Let me say it again. The more you know, the more you ought to grow. David said that word about hitting my heart. Why? That I may not sin against you. So he challenged us in, in, in four areas. What we hear, how we speak, how we get angry, and our behavior. Now, then he goes into self-deception, self-deception in 22 through 27. Okay, he says, when you hear the word and don't do the word, you deceive your own self. Verse 23, for if any man heareth the word and not do it, and not do it, he is like a man beholding the natural face in the glass, like a man looking at himself. But check out, but check out the idiot. For he beholds himself and go away and straight away forget it what manner of man he was. He forget how he looked. That's an idiot. Wait, you look at yourself in the mirror and as soon as you leave the mirror, you forget what you look like? He's saying when you hear the word and don't do the word, that's, you, are, you are that idiotic. You're like a man, it's a simile, you're like a man or woman who looks in the mirror, see what they look like, leave the mirror, and forget what they look like. Verse 25. But whosoever looketh into the perfect law of liberty, freedom, and continue therein, who hear the word and do the word, continue therein, who hear the word and do the word, not being a forgetful hearer, not being like the man who as soon as he leaves the mirror, as soon as he leaves the word, he loses it. This man shall be blessed in his deeds. Glory to God. He said, don't be just a do a, a hearer. Once you hear the word, be disciplined enough to go out and do the word. Because if you're not, you're not self-discipline, you're self-deceived. Verse 26. If any, oh, I like this. If any man among you seem to be religious or saved or sanctified or filled with the Holy Spirit, check this out. This is how you know whether somebody's saved or not. And bridleth not his tongue and, and insist on tweeting and Facebooking and yapping and can't stop their response. Can't bridle his tongue, can't stop yapping. But there's again, but deceive his own heart. That man religion. He said, you cannot follow Jesus and not learn how to shut your mouth. You ain't got you. I'm telling you like I tell Emma, you don't have to respond to everything. She always got to explain why she doing it, when she doing it, what she doing. I tell her, shut your mouth and just say, yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Because the more you yap, the more trouble you're going to get in. Adults don't care about your opinion on, on, on most issues. Just say, yes, ma'am. And, 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 you know, and you got employees like that who always got to have the last word. Mama would always say, oh, I'm going to get the last word. I told him the other day, I said, uh, shut your mouth. Now, what you say about me under your breath, I don't care because I can't hear it no way. 
but what come out of your mouth need to shut up. Just be quiet. Because she'll do that with teachers. And they do it. You gotta have the last word. But, but, I don't want to hear no buts. It's because I don't care. Just do what he says. When he said, it, shut your mouth. No, now, know the verse 27. Pure religion is undefiled before God, and the Father is this. Watch this. Here, if, here, is, here is somebody that's really saved that you visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction and to keep himself unspotted for the world. Now, you got to be careful with that in these days because folk don't want you at the house. Back in those days, they, they, they wanted the elders and the pastor and everybody to come and lay hands on them and pray. Folk don't want you at their house. So, you, you know, so we're going to have to stand before God and God going to say, why didn't you go visit the sick? I'm going to say, because they didn't want me to. Why didn't you go visit? Because they didn't, they, they, they don't, uh, Lord, uh, in, 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 Lord, I'm saying, Lord, as you know, in those day and age, they didn't want you at their house. They don't want to preach at their house. They don't want the deacons at their house. They don't want the matrons at their house. They don't want the missionary at your house. They don't want us at their house. So we got to be careful with them. But anybody that needs help, we must be willing to help them. Oh my God. I plan on getting through some of chapter two. I tell you what, let me do some of chapter two. And then we'll get through chapter two. He said, my brethren, have not the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory with respect to person. Now he's getting to talk about here. Uh, he, he's going to talk about how how y'all play favorites in the church and in your life, but particularly in the church. And he's condemning this idea of playing favorites based on what people have or having big eyes based on who's rich and who's poor. This is what he's dealing with now. He said, brethren. Oh, my God. Have not the faith of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory with respect to person. He says, don't have respect of person based on certain things when you are saved. Verse two, for if there come in your assembly. Now, it depends on what verb in the Bible you use. Some will say church. Some will say congregation. Uh, he's talking about the church. A man with a gold ring and godly apparel. And there come also a poor man in vile raiment. So he's giving them an example. A rich person come in the church and a poor person come in the church. Now notice how they show favoritism based on how much money they had. And ye have respect to him that weareth the, um, the good clothes. And say unto him, sit here, you give him the best place because of how he look and what he wear. And say to the poor, stand there, thou, thou there. Or sit here under my footstool. Verse number four. And, and are you not then partial in your in yourselves? And are you become judges of evil thoughts? Yet uh, the answer is yes. You are judging somebody with evil thought. You are showing favor to them. You write um, uh, my letter. That ain't MTV. You don't know who the PhD is unless I say it. And who ain't? You don't know who the rich and you don't know who the poor. We don't have this problem. Glory to God. He says, verse 10, hearken, my beloved brethren, have not God chosen the poor um, of this world uh, to be heirs of the kingdom which he had promised to them that love him? Now, he's talking about rich people who were uh, looking down on poor people and who were prideful and taking advantage of people because of their riches. There's nothing wrong with being rich. OK, he's not talking about rich people in general. He talked about a specific rich people with a specific mindset like my richness ought to give me favor with somebody. The devil is a lie. Your riches don't mean anything when it comes to church. Except you can give more and we appreciate that. <laughs> I mean, we appreciate that. But the reason God instituted tithing was because or purpose as a man giving in his heart so there would be no. Um, uh, argument about how much a person gave. All right. He said, but ye have despised the poor. That's the problem. They had, they were looking down on poor people. MTV got a reputation. Everybody welcome. I don't care whether you straight, gay, um, 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 uh, rich, poor, black, white, green, purple. It doesn't matter. Whosoever will let them come. Now I'm going to preach the gospel. Okay. And, and if the gospel hit you, you just say, ouch, <laughs> glory to God. Okay, I, I got to finish this. Verse six, but you have despised the poor. Do not the rich oppress you? Every rich people don't oppress, but those rich people were bringing them uh, uh, under slavery and draw you and taking them to court. See, sometimes people, Teresa and Snoop and Mary and Monetta, sometimes people we look over, we ought to be looking at. And sometimes people we looking at, 
we ought to really be looking over. Here's a wonderful principle here. He said, do not they condemn that worthy uh, name by which you are called? He said, man, they even make fun of the fact that y'all say, if ye fulfill the royal law according to the scripture, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself, you do well. I think I'm going to stop there because Covenant Grace is still on vacation, so I'll be pinch hitting for her tomorrow night. So tomorrow night I'll be on not at 6, but at 7. Okay, tomorrow night I'll be on not at 6. And either I'm going to talk about this law because there's some idiots going around trying to take us back to the law. And I need you and I need to teach you how to defend it. Or I'm going to talk about the fact, I'm sorry, the truth on tithing because people are still messing that up. Join me tomorrow night at 7 o'clock. Uh, and I'm going to start here if I talk about the law because you need to understand we're not under the law. We're not under the law. They lying to you. And tomorrow night I may teach you how to. Um, and these are Christian pastors that they are challenging and the Christian pastors don't know how to respond. Now, and tomorrow night, if the Lord lead me to teach about the law, uh, I'm going to teach you how to respond to these idiots that want to tell you that if you go to church on Sunday, that's the wrong day and, and all that foolishness. But I'll deal with that tomorrow night. Thank y'all. God bless y'all for tuning in tonight. Hopefully uh, the Lord will add a blessing to his word. Um, MTV. Okay, uh, KJ's funeral is Saturday at 12 o'clock at MTV. Uh, we will have more seats than normal. So everybody, if you're coming to the funeral, you have to wear a mask. You have to wear a mask. Okay? If you're not going to wear a mask, just watch it on Facebook Live. Okay, um, That's King Solomon Hutchinson and Norma Hutchinson's baby boy. Uh, God called him home the other day, and that's my godson. And um, his funeral is Saturday um, at 12 o'clock at MTV. Let us keep the Hutchinson family in our prayers. Um, Y'all go research me. <laughs> go, and, go, and, go, go, go and research and... Um, and, and see if what I taught you was correct, okay? And if it not, call me, and we'll talk about it, okay? Uh, I would put my number out there, uh, I always, 334-728-1, what is it, 334-728-1221? Well, Janie put my number out there because she, uh, she got it. I think it's 334-728-1221, okay? Uh, that's it, God bless y'all. Uh, Janie is putting the announcements up. Remember, tomorrow night I'll be back. Um, tomorrow night at seven, not six, but seven. That's my phone number. Seven, two, eight, one, two, two, one is out there. You free to call me. Okay. Uh, until tomorrow night at seven o'clock, God bless you. May the peace of God be with you. Assalamu alaikum.